Yoga is a unique gift to the humanity by the Indian scholars. We call them rishis. This rishis address yoga as a pure spiritual practice. And this yoga is the base of Indian spirituality. Yoga is not just a physical practice. Physical practice is only a, a first level of yoga. It's having a, a lot of other practices. The advanced level of yoga practice is a lot related with the one's inner experience. So this is only one can feel. It can't explain logically. So it's very important to the success of yoga to follow a, a tradition because they know what the real aim of this and real benefit of it. Here we are giving a very traditional way of yoga practice. Before starting the practice of yoga, one need to a preparation, a mental and physical preparation. We are preparing now to create and develop a challenge in you. Now we are practicing the first asana is called Tadasana. This means the palm tree, the palm tree pose. This provides a complete circulatory stretch and improve the blood circulation throughout the body, refresh your body, activate your body. So it's very important in the beginning. You inhale when you take up your hand and hold the for a while, then exhale when you down. You continue the practice five to seven rounds. Next is a jogging practice to warm up your body. It's not just a warming up, it's the best purification practice also. You need to take a continuous breathing when you're jogging. A speed breathing like in the Kapalapati, like practice. It will improve the presence of oxygen and will remove the surrounded carbon dioxide from your all cells and make energize you. A two to three minute practice of jogging is good before the hard practice. So after the practice you need to take some deep breath to normalize your breath. Only after normalizing your breath, you need to go for the further practice. So now to do a short jumping practice. It's also very good to improve your breathing capacity. Also good warm up practice. Half minute practice will be good. Now to do some joint movement practice, the loosening exercise. In yoga it's called the Anka Chalana. We have five different types of practice. Your feet. Your hip. Your neck your wrist, your shoulder. This is a neck strengthening practice. You need to push your head. Not too heavily. Aim is to strengthen your neck muscle. So while inhaling, you need to give a pressure on the head. Hold for a while. 
and by exhaling you need to release. Uh, five to seven times if you give the pressure it can strengthen your neck muscle. If somebody have a specific neck problem like spondylitis, they can do this separately from this weekends at different time of day, four or five times in a day, it will be good. Your wrist. Your shoulder. It's called Shusana Kriya. Shusana Kriya means the breathing exercise. It's also to improve and balance your breathing system. You need to open your hand by inhaling and close while exhaling. Slowly, deeply, without any hurry. With a complete feeling of expansion and relaxation. This is the Trikonasana, the triangle position. In this series, there is a five different Trikonasana practice. This coming first of all. It's give provide a good twist to the spine. The daily practice will reduce your hip by removing the waist at hip region and strengthening your shoulder and arm muscles and correcting the shape of the spine and improve the steadiness of the body. It's the second one of that Trikonasana series. It's a good side stretching practice. This practice will reduce the fat or waste. It's opening your ribs and improving your breathing capacity. And of course, correcting the shape of the spine also. This third type of Trikonasana is almost similar to the first type. Similar benefit. But also it's strengthening the back muscle.
Now we are practicing the fourth type of Trikonasana. And this is the standard practice of Trikonasana. It's a very good stretching practice. It's give a good stretch for your leg muscle. And very good for your lower back. Improve the steadiness of the body. Strengthening the shoulder and arm muscle. But the people having the severe back problem, not to practice this in the beginning. Next practice is named Parsha Konasana. This means side ankling practice. It's a good balancing asana. Also, it provides a good stretch for your wings and strengthening your leg muscle and give a good shape to the body. This practice is called Utkarasana, the squat position. The practice will improve the balance of the body, make you more flexible and simple your body. And to reduce the fat at belly, Ten to fifteen times regular practice will be good. It's very good for the knee also, but people having the knee problem don't practice this in the beginning. It's also called. The Utkadasana is the chair position. This is mainly to strengthen the leg muscle. Also providing a steadiness to the body by strengthening your spine. And it's good for knee, but not to practice with any problem. This is Parsha Uttanasana. Parsha Uttana means side bending asana. This practice providing a good stretch for your leg muscle, the back side of your leg. And also provide a good stretch for your lower back. It's very good for the kidney. And it's opening, in the final position is opening the cervical part of the body and improve the circulation in the head. So in the final position, your forehead must touch at knee and your spine keep in the round shape to open the vertebra.
is a combination of two asana is calling ardha chantrasana the backward bending and the padahastasana by this forward bending this asana is a very good stretching to all your digestive tract and it reduces the fat at your belly and strengthening your back muscle and open your chest so very beneficial asana you regularly practice So in the backward bend position one need to take care to keep your eye in between your hands and in the forward bending position in the final position your forehead must touch at your knee but a person having a back problem to avoid this forward bending part This practice is called Gajakarani. The Gajakarani means the action of elephant. The aim of this practice to cleanse your nasal passage, your nostril, and also it's improving the blood circulation to the head. This is very good practice for the people suffering with the sinusitis and people having high blood pressure. not to practice this this is the final practice in standing is calling the meru chalana means spine movement the aim is to remove all the tension by the all stretching and bending practices so after this practice you need to lie down and relax and to prepare for the lying practices lying asana practice so after the standing practice before going to further yogi practice one need to take up to 7 minute of relaxation minimum so what one need to be in shavasana position is the dead body position crop position you need to lie on back by keeping your feet little apart your hand away from your body palm looks up and close your eye make free your whole body and make sure that no tension in any part of your body the every muscle and joint make free you feel that i am relaxing on the ground you feel the ground feel you totally on the ground and take enough breath you don't control your breathing you take enough breath and enjoy your breathing So after shavasana is the breathing practice is called shusana kriya shusana kriya means the breathing exercise
is a very good practice to improve your breathing capacity and balance your breath and also very good mind affected practice to take some deep breath deep and long breath by moving your hand up and down and try to make a, a rhythm in your movement of hand and with a complete presence of mind in the practice don't lose your mind in between your practice as seven to turn round practice will be good This is Merudantasana. The Merudanta means the spine. So this practice is affecting your spine. That is why this name. So this practice strengthening one's back muscle, the spine related muscle. Now of course your abdominal muscle also. this practice is very good to improve the blood circulation through your leg muscle so a five round practice is good this is viprita meru tandasana means opposite to the spine position here you need to up your upper body up to middle height this also good for your abdominal muscle and for your back muscle too is improving the capacity the muscular capacity of your body the next is navakasana the bot pose this position resemble like a traditional bot this practice also good for the abdominal muscle strengthening your ab muscle also helping to improve the blood circulation to the abdominal region by this specific posture and is very good for the abdominal organs is also very balancing practice also So next practice is called Pavana Muktasana. The Pavana Mukta means the gas releasing practice. This practice is very good for the gastric problem and is giving a light massage to the abdominal organ. So it's good for the digestive system. most important thing is in the final position your breath must be out this is also the other version of pavana muktasana So we use both leg together. The same benefit, a little bit more effectively.
Now we are going to practice Makrasana. Means the crocodile position. It's a good twisting practice. It's provide a good twist to your spine. It also provide a good stretch for your waist region. So regular practice improving your flexibility of the body. Reduce the fat at waist. A very good exercise for your neck, especially the cervical point region. Now we are practicing Sarvangasana. One of the most important asana in the asana practice, in the Hari Yoga practice. The traditional teachers call it as a prince of asana. A lot of benefit of this asana. The mainly the circulation, blood circulation related benefit. This reward position asana provide a lot of blood circulation in the head because of his specific position. This is good for your thyroid glands, it's good for the or brain centers, it's very important asana. One need to practice every day this. This is another version of Sarvangasana. What other effect of Sarvangasana have in this? But some variation in the position to improve the circulation in our leg joint, in the, our genetical part region. And this practice is very good for people suffering with the hemorrhoid. It's also very good for the urinary tract related problem. Yeah, the next asana is called Matsyasana. It's the fish position. You always use as a complementary practice to the previous asana, Sarvangasana. It's both asana to do together always. The Sarvangasana one can do a three round. If you're doing Sarvangasana throughout, the same round you need to do in the Matsyasana also. Here the position is with the normal breath. A five to seven normal breath you can hold in the final position. And continue round. Now we are practicing Halasana. Hala means the plow, the traditional plow. It's a very good asana that give a good stretch for your spine. It's opening your spine. It's opening the ribs at your upper back and strengthening the neck muscle and improve the flexibility of your body. Now after this practice we again doing the Makrasana once more, but your feet together here. 
very important to practice this asana after the previous three asana it's a very good spine twisting practice is correcting a lot of spine related problems this called sedu bandhasana sedu bandha means the bridge the bridge position this practice strengthening your back muscle your thigh muscle and good for your knee and also strengthening your neck muscle and improve the circulation in the head shall we are going to do a little variation in the same practice in this asana you need to raise your one leg in the bridge position same benefit but is little bit more strong comparing to other Now we do the Paschimottanasana. This means the back stretching practice. In this asana, your whole back side and your spine get stretched, and it's good for the lower back. It's reducing the fat at waist. and very good for your nervous system and make your body very flexible now we are changing our position on stomach to do some stomach asanas as we do a cycling practice is called makara kriya in the yogic name it's a very good asana to give relaxation to your leg muscle is good for your knee and also is effective to your lower back a 15 round each practice will be very good always to take enough relaxation in between every asana and for a short while now we go for the next practice that is bhujangasana is the cobra position is the one of the most important practice that's good for your back muscle is always yoga recommending to the back problem as this is a back muscle related practice you need to use more your back muscle than your arm muscle this is the shalabhasana the locus practice one can do this the single leg and both leg together also this also strengthening your back muscle and also improving the blood circulation to your pelvic region
So next asana is Naukasana, the pot pose on stomach. It's also mainly aiming to strengthening your back muscle. The daily practice of this asana will give you a very strong back muscle. Same time it's improving your back moving capacity also, your flexibility. Now a complete backward bending asana is called the Dhanurasana, the bow pose. It's a very beautiful asana, it's improving the flexibility of body and provide a good strength to your back muscle, give a good stretch to the abdominal region, it's good for your digestion system also. After this backward bending asanas, one must do the next position is calling Shashankasana, the rapid pose. It's a relaxing position. One to take a normal breath in this position. Up to 15 normal breath, if you relax in this position, can provide a good relief to your back muscle and also is give relaxation to your mind too. Now we are going to practice the Marjari Asana. Marjari means the cat. Here we are stretching like a cat. This practice will provide a good stretch to your spine, your nervous system, activating your all internal system, especially your endocrine system and improve the flexibility of your body. Now the next asana is called Vakrasana, means the twisting asana. You need to twist your whole body from the hip with a tight muscle. This practice will provide a lot of strength to your body and correcting the shape of the spine and will improve the steadiness of your body. Now we are practicing Upavishta Konasana. It's an ankling practice in sitting. This will provide a good stretch for your leg muscle. And stretching your spine. It's mainly practicing to improve the flexibility of the body. The daily practice will make easier movements. Again, practice once more the Paschimottanasana. We did this before after Halasana. It's a good back stretching practice.
Ardhamatsyantrasana. Now we are practicing Ardhamatsyantrasana. It's a perfect spine twist practice. It's a very important practice to improve the flexibility of the body and will provide a good massage to your all internal organs, especially the abdominal organs and is correcting almost all the spine related problem. We provide a good shape to the body. The daily practice will help to maintain your fitness of the body. is called gomugasana meaning is the cow face position it's a breathing practice this practice a five to seven round of this practice to improve your breathing capacity and balancing your breath by correcting your left and right lungs so one need to do the both side This is Ustrasana, means the camel position. It's a very good asana for your lower back. It's a good backward bending asana. It's opening your chest, so it's very good for your heart and lungs. It's provide a good stretch for your digestive tract. It's a Shashankasana. It's a complementary asana to the camel position. One must do a forward bending asana and follow to the important backward bending position. This is Pranamasana. It's nothing muscular. This is practicing to improve the circulation, blood circulation into the head. It's a preparation for the important practice like the head stand and shoulder stand like practice. Now we are going to practice the final session of this class. Some breathing practices and a short time meditation. The position is Patmasana, the lotus position. The most supporting position for the mind level practice. In this position, our hand finger is in Jnana Mutra. Now we are practicing some deep breath practice, abdominal deep breathing. You need to take a five to seven long breath by only moving your abdominal muscle. You need to pump up your belly when you are inhaling and you need to take in when you exhale. This is the just expanding breath, this is the thoracic breath. Do the deep breath by only expanding your chest.
shoulder breath is called the urdhva shasana the upward breath you need to aggressively exhale when the hand down and to inhale when you hand up a continuous 30 to 40 times practice will be good after the speed breath we need to take 3 to 5 long breath all these three section of breath will balance your lungs to with a complete presence of mind now we are going to practice a abdominal speed breath this practice is a good massage for your abdominal organs the, but the most important thing is to give compress your lungs from the lower lap after the speed breath practice always to do some long breath to normalize your breath to normalize in your breath you just feel your eyebrow center and enjoy that vibrant effect at your face always finish your practice with a dedicated prayer.